Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Now today I'm going to be talking to you, talking to you about white powdery mildew on Kalanchoe succulent plants. A little bit about it, what causes it and what you can do to treat it. Now white powdery mildew, there's many different types of white powdery mildew and it, and it can attack practically every type of plant. But it is low, the, the, the specific type of powdery mildew is sort of localised to that individual plant. And that's why I'm going to be talking about Kalanchoe's and not any of the other plants. But obviously the powdery mildew can go on all plants. But this, for example, this is localised just to this individual type of plant. So this will not spread onto this ZZ plant, for example, or any of my other ones. So if you do have this, then obviously if you have other types of the same plant around it, it can spread to the other plants, but not if you have other different types of plants. But that's a whole new, another thing again, it just want to talk, keep this as brief as possible, a little bit about that. So you don't need to panic if you only have it on one individual plant, it shouldn't spread to the others. But you need to work out why has it got it in the first place. Now, the good news about this particular white powdery mildew is it's unlikely to kill a plant. Obviously it looks very unsightly as you can see here. And if I didn't treat it, it could spread across it and the plant would struggle to get photosynthesis and the light. And that could very much weaken the plant. But as long as you treat it, it can stop it in its tracks. And what it is, I said, there's many different strain, many different types of this white powdery mildew. And uh, the reason why it, why it happens is often down to quite a few different things which we're gonna talk about now. Now, this particular plant here, it's coming into flower. Lovely. This is my mother of thousands, Kalanchoe Degre Montiana. And it was in the polytunnel doing very well, all nice and green. And because it was coming into flower, I thought, oh, I'll bring it into the house. It's very bright here in our, in our kitchen and it's close to a window. So it's going to do very well there. But almost within a couple of days of bringing it in, I noticed that the white powder starting to come on out here. And it's pretty much took over pretty quickly. Now, Obviously, I, I started wiping it off with soap and water. Sometimes if it's very mild, that's fine. But it's starting to take over now. So I'm going to explain what I'm going to be doing to treat this, the whole of this plant then. And I think what happened is bringing it from the polytunnel into the house has caused it's a little bit of stress. Plants don't like to be moved, especially when they are coming into flower. And sometimes something as simple as stress can cause this on a plant, it's more prone to get this fungus. So that's a big reason why sometimes the stress, stress of moving plants about. And it seems to be a very common type of fungus at this time of year in the autumn, fall and winter time, when you have probably a lot more, you have the heating on, too much heat, too much humidity and lack of vent air ventilation can all cause this. Overwatering plants kept in too much damp soil can encourage this as well with the leaves. Overhead watering, if you're spraying plants, I don't spray this one at all, overhead watering, but if you do, that can also encourage it. Leaves being kept too damp and things like that. But it's, it's one size doesn't really fit all because it can be too much dry air, too, too much damp air, lack of ventilation, stress to the plant, and over, over fertilizing can cause that weak growth and then they're more prone to get this as well. So as I say, it's often down to a lot of things down to the environment, being kept too warm and too dry and too cold. Kalanchoes do like a winter minimum temperature, ideally of around 15 Celsius, which is about, which is about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. They can do okay at 10 C, which is about, which is about um, 50 degree Fahrenheit, but ideally 60 degree Fahrenheit is better because below that they can also come down with these um, sort of fungus diseases and things like that. So that's a little bit about why it happens. Now, if you have this, what do you do? Now, to treat it, the best way of treating it once you've got it is actually using a fungicide, something that is going to kill the fungus. And before I mention any more, the good news is I say this fungus will rarely kill a plant. And uh, it is very different to other type of um, mold, for example, that you sometimes see on plants. And you get the mold, the white mold that appears on the surface of the soil, and that's nearly always harmless and even beneficial to the soil because it contains um, good uh, microbes. And I've made a video on white mold on, uh, on houseplant soil and is it harmless and a little bit about it. So do check that video out, links up above and down below if you have white mold or the very pale sort of yellowy green mold on your soil. Um, I say it's different to algae and things like that, but molds is a, is a big topic altogether. But this one is, I say, just down to this white powdery mildew. 
And uh, the best thing to do is obviously to treat it with a fungicide. There's two different ways of dealing with it. One is the complete natural method, which is using uh, neem oil. And you can either spray the whole plant with neem oil or make a solution up in the dish and uh, gently um, either wipe all the leaves or possibly brush on the, the neem oil over the leaves, cover the whole entire plant. Normally I'd spray plants with uh, neem oil. It's a great fungicide. But because this plant, those of you who know the Mother of Thousands, has tons and tons of little babies all along the leaves, as you can see here, absolutely beautiful. If I was to spray this with uh, the spray bottle with neem, there's no doubt all the babies would fall off and it would lose its lovely appearance. So I'm going to be making up a little dish in a dish with uh, the neem oil and brushing it on the undersides of the leaves, being very, very careful not to uh, touch the babies so they don't fall off. So it's a difficult, difficult thing there, but I'm going to be doing that. And so that's the natural method. Now you can also use a chemical method, which is by using special fungicides that ideally have got copper in them. And you can, again, spray the whole plant or wipe the leaves with this, the, the fungicide. A systemic one is better because it work its way through the plant and prevent this white powdery mildew from coming back again. And uh, there's quite a lot of different ones on the market. I always prefer to use neem, but as long as you use one that's going to work and it's going to be effective, that's always the best way. I'm going to show you the two different uh, types of uh, fungicides that you can use now. Now these are the two um, different types. This is the um, natural way, organic neem oil, and I mix that up with a bit of horticultural soap. You can also use a very natural dish soap as well and mix it up. And I have made a video on how to use neem oil to prevent pests and uh, fungal disease and things like that on your plants. So if you haven't seen that video and you want to know how to, how to use this, do check it out. Links will be up above and also down below in the video description. And then this is the chemical method. I prefer to always use this, but I always sometimes have to use this if that doesn't always as, is effective or if it's a very severe infection. But I find neem oil is very good, I have to say. This is what I used to use before I used the neem. And this one is, this, this brand is called Rose Clear Ultra, but it's a fungicide. Again, it's a systemic one. So you spray the plant with it and it works through the leaves and prevents it from coming back. And the neem oil is very good, but you do have to sort of repeat it. So when I use this the first time, I'm gonna to have to leave it about three days and then do it again, and then probably another three days again to make sure completely kill all of the fungus. But these are the options. And uh, if you have this on your Kalanchoe plants, then you'll know that how to treat it and also what to do to prevent it coming back again. As I say, in this case, I think plenty of ventilation. It's probably, you know, coming in from the polytunnel into here, it's probably been a little bit of stress for it. It's doing okay. Now it's coming into, into flower or bud, I should say. But um, I'm gonna pull this away because I had it a bit too close to the other plants here. Pulling it away so it's have a bit more ventilation now as well and uh, treat it and see how it goes. I hope you found this video useful, guys. And if you want to know lots more um, info on how to care for and grow cacti and succulents, please do subscribe to my channel for lots of care videos. And also check out my website for lots of care and infos on growing cacti and succulents on there, desertplantsofavalon.com. And I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye. Yuck. Hopefully this will be gone soon.